So what's the most difficult part when you are creating a new story? Uh, I mean, the hardest part for me is getting, uh, like, getting to the middle. If I can get to the middle and I, and I still feel like I have some momentum, then I'm usually okay. But if I get to page 60 and I find that I'm sort of losing a little bit of energy in the story and I don't really know what's going on, that's big trouble. Yeah. How does this enormous success affect you when you have to start a, a new story? Like right now, right <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know yet because I haven't <laughs> finished a story since uh, The Vault of Stars came out. Writing it? <laughs> um, I mean, but that's an interesting question because I, I feel very, very grateful uh, for the success of, of uh, the Fault in Our Stars and now all, all my other books. Um, it, it, it is, it's always hard not to feel like people are looking over your shoulder when you're writing. Like it's always hard to just be inside of the story and feel alone in the story while you need to be. It has been harder for me the last couple of years. I don't know if that's because of uh, what's happened with the books or if it's because of other things, but it's definitely something that I've struggled with trying to figure out how to, um, you know, how to get uh, to a place where I feel like I'm just inside the world of the story and there are no distractions. Mm -hmm. um, according to you, how do you manage to make something extraordinary from something like so ordinary, like something that's not so important, but did you make it? Well, I never, I've never had big ideas. Like, I always, always admired writers. Like some of my favorite um, young adult writers have big ideas. You know, like uh, Suzanne Collins with The Hunger Games, or Veronica Roth, or Holly Black, um, uh, or Tahara Mafi. Like they have big ideas. Like, and I, whenever they have, whenever they tell me about their their new ideas, I'm always like, oh, that's so good. I want an idea like that. But I only ever have like tiny ideas. You know, like. Um, and so I just have to kind of stitch them together into a larger story. I've just never been the kind of writer who um, thinks conceptually, I guess, or I, I have to think a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. One of our fans uh, wrote a, a question for you. So uh, what would you say to someone who wants to become a writer? Um, I, would, uh, two, I guess two things. First, I would say read a lot. Um, read broadly read books that are great, read books that are terrible, um, read books, but especially read books that are being published now. Mm -hmm. If you want to be part of uh, the contemporary conversation about books, you need to be, I think you need to be conscious of what people are writing now. Um, uh, someone, when I was starting out, told me to, that, that I should read the books that I wanted to sit next to on the bookshelf, mm -hmm. and I found that to be very helpful advice. Mm -hmm. Um, and the second thing that I would say, which seems obvious, but maybe it isn't, is like write a lot, write and write and write and and be okay, and forgive yourself if you can't finish something and just keep going and uh, keep trying to find your way into ideas. And uh, when you can get people to read what you've written, um, accept their criticism. You know, like listen to their criticism and acknowledge it and uh, try to learn from it because, uh, you know. I, I mean, I, I still delete most of my first drafts, um, and I've been doing this a long time. So I think you, yeah, you have to read a lot and write a lot. Okay. So now we're going to start with this uh, tag. I, okay, uh, great. So, uh, fast questions, uh, yeah. fast answers. Fast, fast, fast. What place fast. would I'm you choose to disappear in? Wait, start over. I'm not ready. Okay. Okay, now I'm ready. ready. What place would you choose to disappear in? Oh, uh, Reunion. Okay. With, uh, with whom would you disappear? My wife. <laughs> what clues would you get, uh, leave behind? What, what? What kind of clues would you uh, Oh, <laughs> well, I don't think I'd leave behind clues because I would just want to be disappeared. Okay. Um, but no, maybe I would, I like to leave, I, now, now this is not a short answer. You told me short <laughs> answers and I'm giving you a long answer. Um, I, really like, uh, I really like scavenger hunts, uh, so I would leave behind very complicated, coded messages. And whom will go find you? Oh, um, my brother. Okay. <laughs> How Be would a good you YouTube series. <laughs> this is a good idea for a YouTube series. You're giving me a great idea. How would you call your personal paper town? Um, like, oh, gosh. Uh, Orlando, the place I grew up. <laughs> and the last one, what would you do the last night before disappearing? <laughs> um, another great question. I don't think that I would go on a night of revenge the way Margot does. Uh, I might instead go on a night of expressing uh, love and gratitude to all of those who have been um, 
great to me um, before disappearing from their lives forever. <laughs> well, that's it. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This has been such a pleasure to yeah. talk to you. Spanish language booktuber community is stronger than like the in English one. It's growing right now. Mexico is getting. Uh, is that where it's growing really fast? Spanish also happening. That, I think it's great. I mean, I yeah, think yeah. like I I really want to see a world where like booktubers can kind of become part of like the critical conversation around literature yeah. and lots of because like right now there seems to be a bit of a dearth of ways of making a living as a book critic yeah. um, and maybe this is a way I don't know it's a ways away from happening but maybe yeah hope so yeah.